I'm the street artist ATM and I paint endangered species on urban walls as a call to arms as a way to reach the maximum number of people because so much more needs to be done to protect our native species and restore their habitats. They can be simple local things like not using weed killers, aphid sprays or slug pellets in our gardens as these kill the food supply birds depend upon. In my lifetime I've seen so many once familiar birds become rare. Birds like lapwings and kestrels which were such a constant part of my youth. Changes to farming to our landscape are happening so fast which don't leave space for a healthy abundance of natural ecosystems to thrive. I always paint birds that have a connection to the location they used to live here once and could again with habitat restoration. Snipe once drummed over the water meadows of the River Bolo in West London, which now flows beneath the tarmac like so many other rivers in our towns and cities. Most people don't know what these birds are, let alone that they used to live here, so my paintings act as a reminder. There's so much we can do on a small and local scale. Every little thing, every little action can have a huge positive cumulative effect. Local councils can plant fruit trees and planters around tower blocks as source of food for people and birds, or hedgerows on the edges of municipal lawns. Let hedges become wild edges, turn lawns into meadows, inspire local involvement. I think environmental art and public art can have a major role to play in this transformation of our cultural values. The missile thrush was a symbol of a local campaign to protect a patch of green space from development. Images of respect for other life rather than ubiquitous advertising of inanimate objects to be acquired might create a shift in perceptions of value where actions of value to the whole community usurp individual status. The presence of sparrowhawks is a sure sign of a healthy small bird population and a healthy ecosystem, so the sparrowhawk is painted as a symbol of that. Small birds need an abundant food supply of insects, seeds, so no pesticides, slug pellets, weed killers or aphid sprays. They kill the food supply or small birds depend on to feed their chicks. Leave lawns unmown until late summer, piles of logs and leaves all year round in the corner of your garden. One of the best things that can be done for the health and environment is to make a small pond. The Sparrowhawk was painted for a Friends of the Earth initiative to engage the whole community. It was called Ten Times Greener and involved people getting to know each other in re-greening their street with window boxes, hanging baskets, planters, wildflowers around street trees, bird nest boxes and hedgehog boxes. Their template also includes a crowdfunder to pay a gardener to maintain the work. If we protect the water quality of our streams and rivers we also protect the whole web of life. All the invertebrates that the birds depend upon, as well as all the fish, mammals and amphibians that interact to create a complex, abundant and thriving ecosystem. Walthamstow wetlands made from 10 reservoirs is now the biggest urban wetland in Europe. Just down the road from there is my goshawk. I always felt goshawks could live here on the marshes. There are big trees and plenty of prey in pigeons, crows and squirrels. The natural balance is all wrong without top predators. With top predators present, the natural balance is restored and smaller species can flourish. It can be done, there's so much potential for positive change, both in our towns and the countryside. Big areas of land can be given back to nature, it's all about clear objectives and removing harmful practices. I believe there's a profound healing power to both art and nature.